$47,470. That's how much cash I generated in four months of reselling used couches. I documented the journey in these videos, but in this video, I'm gonna give you the step-by-step -step details on how I did it and give you everything you need to know about the couch flipping side hustle. What makes couch flipping awesome is that anyone can do it and you can get started with basically no money. So here's how it works. Step one, find people that want to get rid of their couches. A lot of people will be giving them away for free. Step two, arrange a time to meet, then go to their house and pick up the couch. Step three, take high quality pictures of the couch. Step four, post the couch for sale on Craigslist, Facebook, Kijiji, or whatever classified sites are popular in your area. Step five, someone buys the couch from you. Step six, deliver the couch to their house and collect your cash. And delivery is very important, but more on this later. Step seven, repeat. And that's the whole process. So you can basically stop watching this video right now and go do that. But that's not everything there is to know. Each of those seven steps has little steps in between that I discovered along the way that can make you more money in the fastest way possible. So let's dive into it. As simple as this side hustle is, there are a few requirements you need before you can get started. Number one, living in a relatively populated city. Unfortunately, you can't buy and sell used couches if there's no one in your area to sell you the couches. Luckily for me, I live in Vancouver, Canada, so there's a lot of couches to go around. Now, if you don't know if your area is populated enough, here's what I suggest doing. Go to Craigslist or Kijiji or whatever classified site is the most popular in your area, and then simply search couch or couches. On Craigslist, it'll literally show you how many couches are listed for sale right when you type it in. And on Kijiji, when you press enter, it'll show you the amount of results. I can't talk on the experience of living in a less populated city, but I would suggest at least having 200 to 250, you know, couch listings before you consider getting into it. Requirement number two, transportation. Of course, if you're gonna be flipping couches, you need a way to pick up the couch, take it to your house or something, and then deliver it somewhere else. So for me, this was the big first expense when I started, I paid 950 bucks to buy a pickup truck. Now, some of you may be lucky enough to already have a pickup truck uh, or something that you can use to flip the couches with, but if not, here are a few options. First, you can do what I did and buy a used truck. That's the obvious one, that's the easiest one, okay? Number two, you can ask friends, ask family, someone that wants, you know, that can let you borrow the truck or someone that can help you. And number three, you could use something like a car sharing app. So not a car, you know, a ride sharing app like Uber or Lyft, but a car sharing app. So in my area, we have Modo, and it's like three to four bucks per hour uh, for renting a vehicle out. If none of those work right now and you still wanna get into this, I would just suggest saving up uh, so you can eventually buy that used truck. Requirement number three, storage. So as you can see right now, I am standing in a warehouse that I rent for this couch flipping side hustle, but you don't have to go uh, and do that right off the bat. First and foremost, I would suggest trying to find spare space in your house. I started out by using my garage, but if you don't have a garage or if you need your garage for your cars, then you know try to squeeze a couch somewhere, anywhere, in your living room. You only need to do one couch at a time in your patio, whatever you can do uh, to make it work. If that is not a possibility for you, then the next best bet would be to get a storage unit. That's what I did. I had one storage unit and then I got two and then I got too expensive, so I just got this place. But depending where you live, a storage unit could be, you know, 200 bucks a month. For me, it was 400 bucks a month and that's why I didn't do it. But if you are gonna get a storage unit, I would suggest getting at least a 10 foot by 20 foot storage. You could maybe get by with a 10 by 10, but it's gonna fill up quick. It's gonna get tight in there. So if you can, get a 10 by 20 at least uh, for your storage unit. And really, you should only need one uh, if you're doing this, you know, just on the part time. And the final requirement is not really a requirement. It's more of a recommendation would be to have a lifting partner, someone to help you carry the couches around. When you're picking them up, when you're dro dropping them off, uh, having an extra hand is gonna be a whole lot easier for you. But if that's not a possibility for you, again, you could get by with using a dolly, right? Use a hand truck dolly, or just ask the person you're buying it from or the person you're selling it to if they would be willing to help you uh, unload. <laughs> Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and Kijiji. These are gonna be your main hubs 
for buying and selling couches. Now, when I started out, I did not know what I was looking for. Every single couch looked the same. But as I got going, I figured out what sells and what doesn't. So here's a simple criteria. Number one, look for real leather. Leather is great because it's easy to clean and it's basic. Typically, it's just black, brown, or white. With cloth couches, there are a lot of different designs, colors, and fabric and texture. So black leather is the easy bet. Number two, good condition. Now this might sound obvious, but be sure the couch you're looking for doesn't have any rips, a broken frame, a funky spring, or a nasty smell. Later on, we'll discuss doing some minor repairs, but at the beginning, I'd suggest sticking to good condition stuff. And then there's the couch type. As you start searching, you'll see there are lots of different types of couches. So here are a few of the main ones to look out for in order of value. First is the sectional. Also called the L-shaped couch, this is where the big money is. These guys can sell for 900 or more if it's in great condition or it has a brand name attached. Number two, the recliner. These are the manual recliners or the power recliners. I actually would suggest flipping these first because they don't take up as much space as sectionals and can still sell for up to 600 bucks. Number three, the set. The set is any set of couches, whether it's a two-seater, a three-seater, and a one-seater, but if you have multiple of the same matching set, it'll always be a good flip. Number four, the brand. Always keep your eye out for a brand name couch. People will always pay more if you have a brand name because it's an assurance of good quality. Some brand names to look out for are Natuzzi or Lazy Boy. And last but not least, the three-seater. The basic three-seater will be your staple flip. Um, you're gonna be able to pick up and resell these like clockwork. Now that you know what you're looking for, it's time to start messaging sellers. Now, when it comes to the used market, it's all about speed and reliability. Most of the people just want to get rid of the couches and they wanna know that you're gonna show up fast, first come, first serve, and you're not gonna flake out on them. So I do actually have a template that I wrote up that I just copy and paste and send to everybody that gets this message across quickly and effectively. Now, if you want this template that you can just copy and paste, I made a complete guide for you guys on couch flipping. I got so many questions and messages about it that I said, you know what, here's a free guide, go ahead and grab it. If you want it, you can get it right up here or in the description, totally free, no catch. I just wanted to be able to help you guys out there that wanna actually start flipping couches. So you snagged your first couch deal, congratulations. Now it's time to go to the seller's house and pick it up. Now there's not too much to this, it's literally get the couch, but there's a few things and pointers I want you to keep in mind. The equipment you're gonna need. If you're by yourself, don't forget to bring your dolly, don't forget to bring your ratchet straps for strapping the couch down, a tarp if it's necessary for the weather, furniture pads if you want to go the extra mile, make sure you don't damage the couches, and then lifting gloves to protect your hands. Now the main thing I wanna share here is how to make the best use out of your truck space. Now I've been able to fit up to four couches in my pickup truck, legal or not debatable, but I've been able to fit that many by using this method of stacking the couches. So step one, put the first couch in regularly like you would a couch. The second one, you're gonna to want to Tetris it on top. Uh, fit it like a puzzle piece. Now the best way to do this is actually, we found, to topple the couch over the side of the truck. Now, if you're gonna fit a third couch in there, you're gonna wanna open that gap in the middle and then topple the third one uh, into that gap. Don't forget to use your straps to strap them down and then you're good to go. I do wanna mention it, check your local road safety laws to see if you're allowed uh, to transport couches like that. But for legal reasons, let's say I didn't drive that truck. So now that you have the couch in your possession, the goal is to sell it as fast as possible. And to do that, you need to have show-stopping pictures and a show-stopping listing. The pictures are literally going to make or break your new side hustle. So let's go through the process that I have for making sure the pictures are as good as possible. So step one is to get the best background you can. If you're doing this at home, wherever you are, try to get a nice clean background. For us, it was gonna be this white wall because every other wall in this warehouse is kind of like meh. So this is my best background. Step two, try to have good lighting. Now I have this one light up there. We got some light coming in for the door. It's not ideal, but if you're taking it in the morning, it's all right. 
Keep in mind on couches though, if there's too much light and you get this really high reflection, it can almost make the leather look cheaper, but just do the best you can. Now for the shots. Now I have two main shots that I always need to get. Number one is the hero shot and number two is the angle shot. So here's what that looks like. Boom, hero shot, that's your dead on shot that's slightly above. This is gonna be your main listing image. Don't do this, because that looks weird and don't do that. Get it from the viewing angle that you would if you're actually gonna be you know, looking at this couch. The next is the angle shot. So the angle shot is just a shot off at an angle. Now the reason we do this shot is because it's the best one for adding the dimensions to the image. It's very important that you have the measurements of the couch on the image uh, because that's one of the key things people are gonna be looking at when seeing if the couch is gonna fit in their house. So of course the next step before you're done take out a tape measure and measure the couch. So I go length and then I go the depth and then I go the height. And finally, it's very important not to forget, take pictures of all the features and any damages. That means if it's a recliner, recline the legs, get that in the picture. If it's got a brand name like Lazy Boy, get that in the picture. If it's got a pull out bed, get that in the picture. And if it's got damages, get that in the picture. The last thing you want is to drive to someone's house, unload a couch and have them be surprised and not want to take the thing. So be full disclosure on your listings, tell them everything they need to know about those couches. So now we need to get people to actually buy your couch. And the way you're gonna do that is through having a great listing. Your listing is your sales pitch, so it has to be amazing. So here are the key elements and what you need to look out for. First is your title. Now your title is important for two reasons. First off, it lets people know the key details of your offer. Now this is very important. It's actually the secret, the key that makes this entire side hustle work. The biggest part of your offer is free delivery. The main reason you can pick up a couch for free and resell it for hundreds of dollars is because you're offering free delivery. A lot of people that are trying to buy a couch and pick up a couch, they don't have the means to transport it. So when they see that you offer free delivery, that is a huge benefit to them. So free delivery is gonna be a key thing to add to your title. You also wanna throw in any other key benefits like leather, uh, sectional, recliner, things like that. Next, your title helps you rank in the search engine. So when people are looking for a couch, right, what are they typing into Craigslist? Couch, probably. You will not believe how many times I've picked up a great uh, steal of a deal because the person didn't put couch in the title or the listing at all, right? It just says, you know, uh, two, two piece sectional or great condition recliner or black love seat, right? Those titles sound okay, but they're missing couch or sofa. Uh, so other people aren't finding them. So make sure those main keywords are in your title. The next part of your listing is your images. Now, your images actually are more important than your title, okay? If your images suck, no one will ever even read your title. When people are searching for products, when they're scrolling on any website, they're always looking at the images first. If they see something that catches their eye or if they see something that matches what they're thinking in their head, then they'll glance at the title to get more details. So if your images are bad, you will have a hard time selling the couch. So here's a few things to keep in mind when you're doing your images. First, make sure they are very high quality photos. That should not be a problem with most of the smartphones that are out there today. Number two, make sure the hero shot is first. Don't do some weird close up shot first where people don't even know what they're looking at. Number three, make sure the sizing of the photo is correct. Uh, so it's not getting cropped funny on Facebook or on Craigslist. Number four, have your angle shot with your dimensions overlaid on top of the image. Now I use my computer to do this, but you could use just an app on your phone to uh, draw these lines and put in the dimensions. It doesn't have to look pretty, it just has to be there. And again, make sure you have pictures of all the special features, any brand name and any uh, imperfections or damages that may be on the couch. And finally, the last part of your listing is your description. Now the good news is that if someone's reading your description, you know they're already interested in the couch, right? They like the picture, they like the title, they clicked onto it. They just need a few more details to make sure the couch is the right fit for them uh, and make sure you're not a sketchy person. So here's a few things to keep in mind when you're writing your description. The first sentence should always be the main value point, which is free delivery, right? Put the best parts of the couch first, leather, real leather, genuine leather, sectional, 
free delivery. Next, hit them with the features. Don't make this an essay, right? Don't make this a long post. Just make it bullet point, really easy to read. Uh, people are just trying to skim through. They just want the, the, the facts here. And then finally, what's the condition? Is it like new? Is it, you know, perfect condition? Is there damages? Put this all in there, mention it. Um, and that's basically the description. Don't make it over the top. Again, don't make it a wall of text that's overwhelming. Give the details, give the benefits, and give the features that you have. So let's take it over to the repair section of the warehouse. So this right here is where we do any of the repairs, the refurbishing, the retouches. This is a, our workstation. But before I show you any of that stuff, I do want to say that if you're starting out, I would suggest sticking to just good condition couches. That's what I did. It lets you get a feel uh, for the side hustle and you know start understanding what couches can sell for uh, and what kind of you know fixes might do better in your area. However, once you are ready and you do want to start searching for couches, you know that maybe need a little fixing, a little repairing, uh, it does open up your options a lot uh, and can give you you know bigger profit per flip. Now I'm not a carpenter or an upholster, upholsterer, if that's a word. Uh, so I'm not doing anything crazy. There are just a few key things that I am doing to fix up these couches. Number one, painting real leather couches. So let's take it back over to the repair shop. Um, and I'm going to show you exactly the paint I use and the paint you must avoid. So this right here is the paint that we use. It is by a brand called Angelus. Um, and they, it is a leather paint, acrylic leather paint. So they are made for leather. When I first started out, I did try a spray paint, a couple of them, one by Duplicolor and one by Money's Worth. And the problem with the spray paint is that they dried like crusty. So it gave the couch a texture, which of course is not what you're trying to achieve. So let me walk you through this painting process. So these are the tools that you're gonna need. Now, if you want this exact paint, I'll link it in the description so you can find it. Uh, just go to the description and grab it. They have all the colors there uh, on Amazon. The process is pretty easy. First, you get the paint, put it in the little cup, then you mix them up until you can match the color of the couch. From there, you're gonna just grab your sponge, dab it, and paint up the couch. And the paint finishes really soft, uh, really clean. I know you're thinking, does it rub off? It doesn't rub off. Uh, we tried it, we sat on couches that you know have that, uh, and they totally are cool, good to go. This, again, these are made for purses and shoes and things like that. So they're made for leather and they're made to stick. The next type of repair is for couches like these. If you start doing and picking up cloth couches, uh, you're gonna need to be able to clean these guys. So for that, we use the trusty Bissell. Uh, this is the Spot Clean Pro Heat. And it works really well. Basically, this is the clean water and you can see this side is the finished water. It's all brown and nasty. All you gotta do is fill it up, plug it in, turn it on, um, and you use this little brush head to brush out the couches and get all that grime. If you want this guy, link in the description as well. For basic stains and pet stains, that thing always comes out really good, uh, just like brand new. But for things that are like marker, that's not gonna get the job done. So don't pick up any couches that have marker on them. The next repair I take care of are small rips in leather. And for that, I use this shoe goo. Shoe goo is just glue that's made for shoes and it bonds really nicely with leather. Uh, so what we do, if we can, put the shoe goo on, grab a little clip like this uh, and clamp it together. And again, this stuff is super strong, holds really hard, uh, so don't put too much. Uh, it basically dries like rubber, so you wanna make sure you get it on the inside of the seam when you're clamping it. And finally, cleaning protocol. The absolute, without a doubt, best thing we found for cleaning couches, especially the light colored ones, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. If you have a white couch, a cream couch that has a little off tinge, it's a little dirty, soap, water, sponge will not get it off. But if you put this magic eraser on it for like one swipe, boom, good as new. Now here's a cool little hack. Instead of spending six bucks for this four pack at Walmart, you can go to Amazon and get this huge pack. I don't even know if it might be a 24 or something pack. Um, it's literally the same thing, just not by Mr. Clean. And it's, this is not one big eraser. There is a bunch of erasers in here. So everything we do repair wise comes off of Amazon. I'll leave all the links in the description, but that's all there is for repairs. I don't get too ambitious. Don't do anything crazy. We did do one repair where we fixed the frame, but that was about it. Now I do want to mention, be again, transparent on your listings. I'm not trying to repair these and pass them off as perfect condition. If there was a repair, if there was a paint job, if there was a rip or something that got fixed, Put it on the description, put it on the listing, let the buyers know because again, the last thing you want is to, you know, sell them something that they don't like, then you gotta pick it up and take it back or, you know, scam people by selling beat up stuff that you're gluing together. Let them know.
So now let's talk about some mistakes that you need to avoid. Number one, trying to fix pleather or bonded leather, fake leather. Trying to repair that stuff, it's not gonna go good. There are some kits on Amazon that claim they can do it. We tried them, it doesn't work out. Don't paint it, don't sand it, don't do anything to it, just don't pick it up. Uh, that stuff is really tough to work with. Unless it's in perfect condition, you're not gonna get a good fix on that. Number two, look out for legs. There's a few times where we go pick up a couch, we just grab it, load it up, and we realize later, hey, this thing's got no legs. And selling a couch without legs is really tough, and they're actually surprisingly expensive on Amazon. That's why now whenever we take a couch to the dump or anything like that, we pull the legs off because it's always good to have extras. Number three, not tracking your sales. I know that sounds kind of weird for this little side hustle, but being able to track your sales and go back to see what these couches are selling for is really gonna help you out. Uh, so I have a really simple spreadsheet that I started out with. I now have a super automated one, but if you want the simple spreadsheet, you can go ahead and grab that guide. Uh, the, it's all there, it's the freebie bonus attached to uh, the document where it's gonna give you my actual Excel sheet uh, where you can track the sales. Because knowing that your average couch is selling for 200 bucks or 300 bucks or 400 bucks, it's gonna make a big difference, right? Going back and seeing what are my sectionals selling for? What are my three seats, my recliners? What are the, these things selling for in my area? Uh, that's gonna help you know how much you can afford to pay for a couch uh, and what makes a couch flip worth it or not worth it for you. And now I believe you are well equipped to start your very own couch flipping side hustle today and start making some cash. Now, if you want my messaging templates, you want my actual sales sheet that I use for tracking the sales, then go ahead and grab my couch flipping ultimate guide. Uh, you can get it right here again or you can get it in the description. It's totally free, no catch, just go there and download it. I just wanted to help you guys out because I know that this is a fun side hustle that a lot of you are gonna try out, uh, so why not? give everything I know about it so you guys can you know, get off on the right foot, not make the same mistakes I did, and just go out there, have some fun, make some money. That's what it's all about, right? It's all about that hustle and that muscle and making that money. That's it for this one. My name is JT Franco. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.